With the recent surge in anti-Asian violence and anti-Semitic hatred, we felt it was important and necessary to make a video about our community members' experiences with these systems of oppression. The contents of this video may be difficult to watch and the themes may be difficult to address and confront. Therefore, we encourage you to take care of yourselves as you watch this video and step away from it if necessary to protect your mental health and wellness. Trigger warnings include racism, anti-Semitism, and violence. For those viewers who do not experience these systems of oppression firsthand, we encourage you to use this as a learning experience to better your own understanding of anti-racism and anti-oppression work. Addressing these topics can be uncomfortable. However, being able to recognize that they exist and continuing to learn about them is the first step towards solidarity in our collective fight against white supremacy. Seeing how much racism has come out. We don't want to talk about race because we want to think we're beyond it, but we're not. I have kind of stepped back from Judaism because I have felt so much racism. Being someone who grew up in the Bay Area, there's always this idea that the Bay Area is so progressive. Look at ethnic foods that we have, and there's women in hijabs. Race isn't like that big of a deal. Not really realizing all of the covert racism that was happening behind the scenes, the structural racism, the classism, and how that's all like so tied together. All the incidents that I have been seeing have been in those progressive cities. Moving up to Oregon, realizing there is a lot of overt racism still well alive in this country, some of which was from my own family and all that covert racism that happened more in like liberal areas that's actually still really present as well but we couch it in these euphemisms we don't want to talk about race because we want to think we're beyond it but the reality of the situation is we're not it's deeply ingrained there's that like implicit bias that again i'm still trying to unlearn I grew up very much feeling like the token, like here's this little brown girl who is so eloquent and articulate and raised up in a lot of educational settings. There was a pressure to be a very good student from both of my parents. I would cry over a math problem because I thought I was going to fail. I think the model minority myth is definitely super harmful. A lot of people thought I was doing great and I was not doing great. Everyone expected me to be good at math and I was really bad at math. This kid came up to me and was like, I'll pay you $10 to do some kind of like math test. And I was like, why? <laughs> I'm terrible at math. He doesn't even know that I'm Filipino American. He's just like, oh, well you must be some sort of Asian and all Asians are good with math. Where do you get that? I hate math, math sucks. I feel like I've actually gotten it more so on the Jewish side of things. My dad, every year he looks through the list of Nobel laureates and makes note of which ones are Jewish. A lot of my Jewish development as an adult involved a lot of exploring the parts of Judaism that do not involve being an accomplished physicist. Oh my God. Uh, my family is a giant stereotype. There's me in medicine, my brother's in banking, my other brother is in dentistry, my dad is in jewelry, my mom is in medicine, my stepdad is in medicine. We hit all of those stereotypes job-wise. And so instead of it being like, oh, you actually like worked hard and tried to get into those jobs because those are your interests. It's like, oh, you got into those because they are the Jewish jobs. I've definitely had people like tokenize me and be like, oh, you got in because you were diverse. Like you were POC, that's why you got in. Oh, you're Asian. Well, that makes sense why you're good at math. It is a slap in the face because it's taking away from my hard work, my intelligence. All of like the nights that I would sit with a book and be like, oh my God, this is horrible. I remember in middle school, we were playing musical chairs and we were in music class. These people were like, Amanda, why are you so aggressive? Like you're so aggressive. And I'm like, I'm playing musical chairs. You think I'm aggressive because you thought I was a docile Asian girl, the cute little Asian girl who's like super smart and quiet and whatever. People make this assumption and stereotype that you're submissive. I'm really not and I'm really comfortable sharing my thoughts and opinions. Stereotyping happened to Asian Americans to make us seem like we're successful in this really pressurizing, untrue way because of immigration laws simply. It divides Asians too to the image of what is Asian. The stereotypes of the model minority are usually geared 
geared towards East Asians, and then South and Southeast Asians are generally absent from discussions. My mom as a Thai person, no one in her family went to college. No one in her family has a history of being any kind of model minority. I like understand and I empathize, but not exactly in the same way that I myself experience. It doesn't just hurt us as Asians or Jews, but it also hurts other minorities. We are put forward to the detriment of other groups. It's a tool of white supremacy to like see division between oppressed communities. It's dehumanizing and it breaks solidarity and like solidarity is the only way to truly defeat white supremacy. Because Jews and Asian Americans are both stereotyped as model minorities, our two communities are uniquely positioned for solidarity in the fight against white supremacy. No matter how much our communities assimilate or achieve success, our belonging is conditional. Both as Jews and as Asian Americans, we've seen how when stereotypes go unchecked, they become precursors to hatred and violence. Whenever something bad happens, like you always need a scapegoat. A scapegoat is usually Jews, but since coronavirus came from China, it's going to be the Chinese people. In Brooklyn's Sunset Park neighborhood, which is often referred to as Brooklyn's Chinatown, people were referring to the virus as the Wuhan virus and hurling xenophobic remarks at people of like any Asian ethnicity. I was really afraid I was going to witness an attack. Seeing how much racism has come out. I hear Chinese slurs all the time. And you know, the I thing, the Ching Chong thing. I always wear my mask outside, even if I'm by myself, if anyone is getting beat up in this neighborhood, it's me. People just yelling random nonsense to you. I have to tell people, yes, I speak English. I'm from here. I can understand you. But COVID didn't invent anti-Asian racism. It merely amplified the dehumanization and otherization that we have experienced for a long time. Questioning the loyalty of minority groups in the U.S. is nothing new. We have witnessed this time and time again. I am Afghani and Uzbekistani, and God forbid I'm ever at an airport. Especially if I was traveling with my dad and his name is Zubair Ali, we would be searched and he'd be taken by random searches all the time into back rooms. I have gone to the underside of an airport. I have, since I was a child, been litmus tested, strip searched, patted down, screamed at, dog sniffed, the whole shebang. Something that I also think about, which is more recent, my dad was downstairs with his girlfriend daughter who's also Indian white neighbor comes out and she's like can I help you he was like excuse me I've been connected to this apartment for 30 years who are you and she wrote to their landlord and said this man and Maya were trying to get into the apartment and Maya was super rude to me and I was like lady this wasn't me I said excuse me is there something we can talk about and I swear she muttered bitch my mom keeps asking me to go apologize and I say that this is not my place to try to fix her feelings like this where you are are supposed to be the more understanding person and be like, let me teach them what racism is. Having to fight and explain why what people are saying is wrong becomes such a draining effort. Because of the recent increase in hate crimes against both our Asian American and Jewish communities, we are exhausted. When we get done explaining anti-Asian racism, we are then tasked with explaining anti-Semitism. Judaism has so many conflicting stereotypes. We're really smart and like we're really good at things and we're really rich and we control everything, but also we're really poor. How am I rich and poor at the same time? People sometimes say things that are anti-Semitic. Thinking that there's not a Jewish person in the room. Like the Jews control Hollywood. I'm always like, so where's my job? I had a Spanish class and they made up a story about this really greedy guy who was stealing from people and the teacher was like, why was he stealing from people? And the guy was like, because he's a Jew. Every single person, including the teacher, was laughing at that. They just didn't think that there were any Jews in the class because it's not a Jewish area. Recently, I was part of a dance community in Oakland. I think I was the only Jewish person in this class and they were telling us to like hold our arm out and then my teacher started calling it the Hitler move and she would like laugh and like, I remember like feeling uncomfortable and just being like, I'll just get used to this. And then my friend that is black one day was like, hey, that's actually not okay because a lot of people were hurt by that person and it may seem like it was a while ago but it wasn't i started tearing up i don't think she actually knew at that point that i was jewish but she said it anyways just for the sake of not being a bystander i have this one friend whose mom is from the soviet union she internalized a lot of anti-semitism she is ashkenazi but she doesn't identify as like jewish and my friend has inherited a lot of those ideas which i think is quite sad i have friends that are jewish that will say anti-semitic things about money, about ownership of the media. Like, well, this is something we do see. And I'm like, whoa, do you think that's fair for other Jewish 
communities around the world to say that they have ownership just because they're Jewish of the media and have riches that they don't know about. People don't realize how ingrained this stuff is into our society. The whole like Jews control the media. Back in the day, they literally got forced out of New York City for owning their own movie companies. So where did they go? The West Coast, where there weren't laws against them. If you wanted to take off for a holiday, you had to prove that that holiday actually existed, get like written consent from a rabbi. They would still dock points because you were missing class participation, which is not legal. We had to go to Title IX and go and fight that for an incredibly long time. And once my friend and I like graduated, it all came back. And I knew students who were thrown down the stairs for being Jewish. I had a teacher, I couldn't have been more than nine. There was a portion of class that was dedicated to singing Christmas carols. And because I came from a household that was Jewish and Muslim, I did not know any of the words. My teacher's resolution to that was to send me outside when they did that every day. Sometimes I would go inside and she was halfway through the next lesson already. Nobody pushed back against it. It was completely accepted and things like that are really, really indicative of the way that anti-Semitism and even anti-Asian racism through the model minority myth are kind of just accepted because these two groups are seen as like high performing. So any sort of discrimination that they receive, it's okay because they do really well in America. So there really shouldn't be any pushback or complaining. In internet spaces right now, anti-Semitism is so casually there and like so few people object to it. People make the defense, oh, it's a joke. But I mean, there have been studies and you know, you can just use simple logic to ensure that like, if so many people joke about a thing, the eventual emergent perception of the thing is that joke. When I was younger, I would laugh them off. And I also know now that laughing things off is also a way of coping with something that could be dangerous. What's given me the most anxiety, especially as someone who lives a lot on social media, is the extremist thinking that people have of each other. I feel like there's like this real erasure, this real like willingness to not understand nuance. I always say that anti-Semitism is a sickness that is both on the extreme right wing of politics and on the extreme left wing of politics. It comes from different root thought processes and theories, but it looks very much the same. A lot of people clock me as Israeli. I am not Israeli, but they think that I am. And so I get a lot of anti-Semitism or anti-Semitism hidden as anti-Zionism. I've also had friends having to explain their relationship to Israel if they want to enter into queer communities, social justice communities. Just because I'm Jewish, why do I have to answer this question? I'm not over there. I don't have a vote in that government. Now it's more important than ever that our two communities come together and support each other in combating hate. But in working towards solidarity between Jews and Asian Americans, we first need to do the deep internal work of acknowledging the harm perpetuated against Asian American members of the Jewish community. Whether it be sectarianism, arch normativity, or racism, the Jewish community has a long way to go in terms of having open dialogues and standing together against hate. They say you're only Jewish if you were born of a Jewish mom or you converted in our community, which is like orthodoxy. But what's funny is that how do you know that your mom's 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 mom all the way back to when the Jews took the Torah at Mount Sinai? How do you know that they're all Jewish? You don't know. This exclusionary way of thinking that like you have to be a pure breed, you have to be Jewish from your mom's side and your dad's side, but like especially your mom's side. Arguably our biggest problem in the community is the sectarianism between Jews of different backgrounds, of different denominations nominations of different ethnic backgrounds. It drives me crazy when people talk about whether or not you like look Jewish. If you line up, you know, an Ethiopian Jew, a Polish Jew, a Kaifeng Jew, an Indian Jew, you cannot tell me that these people all look alike. It happens in such subtle ways and may even seem playful because we're talking about things like food and how we look. The more we do that, the more that we're dividing our own community. And I think it's incredibly destructive and actually ends up leaving us really vulnerable from those external attacks of anti-Semitism as well. We really have to unite to be able to have that, you know, strong wall against all these external forces, which unfortunately are getting um, just graver, you know, every single day. For Mizrahi Jews, people think that we need to be fixed. Like our version of Judaism is wrong. Having a Muslim background as well, there is the suspicion that creeps around if people do know that I'm from an interfaith family, that there's no way that I could potentially have any like loyalty to the Jewish faith. I have felt so much racism in the Jewish community 
community, I cannot even begin. I've constantly felt I've had to prove that I'm Jewish since my earliest memories, basically. They'll ask you questions to see how Jewish you are. When did you have your bat mitzvah? Did you go to Jewish school? The most common one, and it almost always comes from old Jewish men, is the question like, why are you here? Did you come to the right place? Are you sure that this was the meeting you were supposed to come to? Oh, are you here because you're like trying to like observe the Jewish people? People would ask me if I was there for the free Shabbat meal, why I wore a Star of David necklace because that's for Jewish people, you know? That really visceral kind of ostracization has really made me feel like I can't take up any space and I often feel really silenced. I've started to just respond with my own humor and I'm just like, I'm here for Shabbat. Like, why are you here? <laughs> I have kind of stepped back from Judaism because I have felt so much racism in shul, in regular conversations. I sometimes feel so tokenized and so fetishized that I just can't be in those spaces. When I feel racism from the Jewish community, I'm like, what are we doing? For a community that's been so persecuted our entire existence. Why wouldn't you extend empathy and understanding and welcoming if the whole point is like preservation and keeping Judaism alive? Why wouldn't you like open your doors to anyone who's interested? It has been really hard for me to separate the racism that I have felt with like the beauty of Judaism because I have felt it so much. Race is such a complicated topic, but ultimately what's happening is there is this consistent deep hurt on the basis of people's assumptions when they look at you. I would really love if we could just get over that as a society. And I think to do so, we need to acknowledge that it's deeply present. Like there's so much that even really good people need to work on so that we can contribute to a society that is actually really equitable and that really does value like the humanity of each person.